Did you know that the Scout uniform is over a hundred years old? Wow. I wonder how many times that's been washed. Hey, Scouter Stan. That's true. 111 years of scouting this year. So that is a significant milestone. And we've had a uniform since day one. Uh, even prior to day one, okay, <laughs> we, we had a uniform. So uniforms are, are an amazing thing. This is actually a requested video. Uh, so I've had several people ask about uniforms in the past and so on. So we're just gonna do an overview of how today's uniform came to be. Now, back when scouting started in the United States, uh, 1910, from that time to about 1922, the uniform that uh, Baden-Powell originally thought would be the best was uh, a long sleeve shirt with shorts. They thought that that was just a very common thing that he's seen over in Europe and, and it was very common. But in the United States, most young people did not wear shorts beyond the age of say 10, okay? That was for kids, that was for little kids. Uh, shorts were, that, that just didn't match up to the culture in the United States. A lot of the uniforms that came out at this time were based on the Great War uniforms, World War I. So a lot of that surplus that was around was being used. And because of that, as you can see here in the picture, there was mainly, they would wear knickers with leggings and uh, with a button-down choke collar jacket or coat. This was a pretty common thing. And, of course, the campaign hat, which was very popular during, during the Great War. The adults would often wear a Norfolk jacket, uh, which had lots of pockets, big buttons, and, of course, they would wear knickers or trousers. Now, a lot of this stuff was made of wool. <laughs> so it was very warm, very water-resistant, and kind of itchy and scratchy. So it was a little, it was one of those things that you kind of had to, the culture, it was a part of the times. Now from 1923 to about 1930, uh, the knickers were being slowly phased out. Now the, the leggings that they were using was basically underwear. It would literally went from the toes to the waist and the knickers would be pulled over it and they would either be buckled down or uh, tied down right above the knee. So it was a very, it could be very uncomfortable. Uh, especially made of wool. The BSA at the time introduced uh, a long sleeve khaki uh, shirt uh, that would have a long sleeve. In fact, at that time, they would often put merit badges on the sleeve. They didn't have a sash. That came later. That was something that was part of the uniform that was being produced at the time. Now, as you can see in this picture, there are many different types of uniforms going on at the same time. From 1923 to about 1930, they were slowly phasing out of the coat and knickers. You see them back in the 30s and 40s, but this is one of the main things. When you're going through a lot of the literature about the scout uniform, it evolved with time. Scouting was going through some significant changes in the uniform as far as, uh, say, for instance, the neckerchief that was being introduced in about that time. But it was a full square. You folded it on the on the bias and it then flipped it end over end and that's how you got the neckerchief. Uh, or you just folded it up, folded it on the bias and then put it around your neck and put some kind of um, a neckerchief slide on it. That, that, was, that was being introduced in about that time. From 1931 to 1943, there was quite a few different variations. In fact, uh, we have a photograph that I'm going to put up here. This photograph actually is from Boys Life magazine. I believe it was 1934. That's where this photograph comes from. And you will see there are three different outfits, as they call them. Outfit A was the long long-sleeved green shirt with shorts. There was also stockings. Uh, there was a garter and a tab that actually went on the garter. That held over all the way through to 70s, so it, it's been around for a long time. Then there was the outdoor gear uniform, which had short sleeves. That was really the only big difference there. Uh, the pockets were a little bit different. They, all these pockets, by the way, had a button down or a pleated front to them. That was, that was important. And then, of course, outfit H, which was the highest level 
outfit H, uh, which literally had the knickers, and uh, instead of leggings, they used stockings, so that, that stayed consistent. So you can see how this was um, morphing, changing, evolving, you know, over time, and then it became a regulated uniform shortly after that. Now, starting back in the 30s, they were starting to use new materials. Nylons were coming out. They were phasing out a lot of the wool products, so it wasn't as warm, especially in the summer and in warmer climates. Uh, cottons were starting to be put in. There was uh, different blends of cloths that they used, mainly to make them more durable. As adult leaders, we know our uniforms are very durable. They last a very long time compared to other clothing that's out there. In 1944, they were in the war to about 1965, the uniform was pretty consistent. It was the uh, short sleeve shirt with the button down pockets and of course the neckerchief and the, the shorts. And they kept the stockings. Like I said earlier, it, they kept them until the 70s. 1966 to about 1972, that's when all of those older fabrics, cottons and wool and uh, different types of materials were being phased out. They were very expensive at the time. Right after the war, they got really very expensive. And they were phasing those out going towards more breathable fabrics, whether it be cotton or nylon or, or mixture. That was something that was going on. And it, during that time, they started to introduce a dark green leadership core shirt. Uh, the dark green was also used in Explorers. That was a big thing. Thing that the scouts had at the time. They still have explorers, but it's been focused on police and fire and rescue. So it's it's it, it, it still exists. Uh, Learning for Life is still there. But back in the 60s and the early part of the 70s, explorers could be of any kind, okay? Uh, almost like a crew is today. They would wear a dark, a very dark green, forest green uh, shirt, along with the standard pants and, and socks. Uh, they also had a dark green tab on their socks. Now the tabs were knitted and they went over a garter that held the socks up to right below the knee. So that was that was the uniform of the day. Now in 1973 to about uh, right before 1980 they had gone through an entire redo of standardization of patches that were on the uniform. Prior to that, patches could come uh, unbordered. They just are woven onto a piece of fabric that the scout or the tailor would fasten on or sew on uh, in a manner to get rid of the extra fabric. They, they standardized it all with borders. And in so doing, shapes came about. That's where we get our current day council strip shape, the, the chevron shape that goes on uniforms today. That comes from that time period. In the 1980s, uh, all the way through to 2008, the new uniform was designed by Oscar de Laurent, uh, a designer that put together the two-tone color, the tan shirt with a dark green or uh, olive green pants. He also introduced things like shoulder sh shoulder tabs. That was a that was a brand new thing back in 1980 and it has evolved and matured and actually come through as the uniform we know today. Since uh, 2009, cargo pockets have been very common on the shirts. Uh, you'll, you'll also see things like zip-aways, which is where the trousers can be turned into shorts very easily. They even have zips on the side of the trousers where you can actually take the lower part off over boots. So that was a new thing. Wicking fabrics that actually wicked away heat and uh, moisture. That was a big innovation. There's even shirts today that have a grill or a, 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 a mesh behind behind them. It's a seam that's open and it allows heat to be vented out of the clothing. The clothing is very durable. It's not quite denim, but it's that type of uh, firm cloth. You can sew patches on and off and they last for years. Just recently I replaced some green pants that have gone through the wash so many times they turned gray. I mean, <laughs> I had had them for 16 years. <laughs> no tears, no no repairs needed. It was I this is 
very durable stuff. It's expensive too. So always having that class B underneath is important. You gotta have that class B so you can take off your expensive shirt and be able to do activities that are more strenuous where you get your nice shirt messed up. So that's that's always important to have. Now, even though some of the parts of the uniform have changed over time, just to stay within the current usage of our youth and our adult leaders, it has changed, but it's never been discontinued. Those uniforms are still just as valid. Uh, in fact, we are a very proud organization, of, especially of our history, and the uniforms represent that in many ways. So we need to encourage youth, if they want to wear the old uniforms, that's fine. They can wear them. It's, it's a tradition. Old uniforms are wonderful to see, especially at flag ceremonies, and that is just a wonderful thing to have available, uh, that, that nostalgia, that that history that we are a, that we represent a big part of it that's something to seriously consider position ranks different positions in the troop or crew those don't really go away they've never discontinued deprecated got rid of uh, disallowed once you've earned that rank whatever it looks like at the time you've earned it that's your rank that's that's important I know of many scouters that have their youth go through the the program and they use the rank patches of the background colors changed this was big in the 70s the background colors or even the different shapes of patches can be worn they've not done away with those they're not disallowed you can wear them if you've earned them that's that's a huge thing if you're representing something that is not current you could represent it by a past patch that's totally fine these are things that are that are not done away with or disallowed these are things that are encouraged for historic reasons. I know for a fact that I've given professionals old patches that was in my family and it was very meaningful. And they wore them proudly on their uniform as a thank you. It was these are these are hugely significant things in a uniform. It it wear what you're wearing. Very, very important to keep in mind. Now with all that, keep this in mind. It would be inappropriate to use a current day rank patch on a uniform representing the 1920s. They had similar ranks, but the patches were different. So you really can't use current day patches. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't fit in. It, it's, it's, it, it's a microwave in a 1960s kitchen. It doesn't work. It is, it, it's not nostalgic, okay? <laughs> now, granted, if it's a first class rank, you could wear the day, the old one on the old uniform totally fine. If you've earned the first class, you could definitely have the scout wear that. That's totally fine. Now, uniforms. We have talked about uniforms. In fact, I'm going to put it up there. Um, uniform inspections should be kept constructive. We need to encourage scouts to be up to date as much as they can on their current day uniform. If they're wearing a nostalgic or historic uniform, that you have to judge individually. So you shouldn't see any new patches on there, but it should be the patches of that time. So if you're wearing a patch, say a new council strip on a uniform that's representing the 1930s, that would be incorrect because they didn't have council strips. They might have a council patch in some of the larger areas, but a lot of them had red strips and was just white lettering that said where the area was. So you have to keep that in mind when you're doing inspections, especially if you're doing inspections of old uniforms. You have to go back in history and see what would be appropriate on that uniform. Look at the pictures. Fascinating, fascinating history about the scout uniform. And wearing the uniform, whether it be a historic uniform, whether it be something that's from your childhood. As adult leaders, we do these things to kind of inspire Inspire the future and I know you do that and I know that you you really work hard at helping your youth keep up that good work uh, we are we are creating tomorrow's leaders so let's keep that going and uh, like always I'll see you on the trail